to tie the Hornberg great streamer pattern. It's actually a dual purpose fly. It's a streamer uh, on the way back and it's a dry fly on the drift. So you cast it out, you know, upstream and across. You fish the drift all the way down like any dry fly and then you strip it back in like a streamer and it comes subsurface. It's a fantastic fly. Probably the best overall brook trout fly that I've ever fished. Okay, we're going to start by putting our hook in the vise. This is a light wire, number 10, long shank streamer hook. It's light wire because we want this fly to stay light for its dry fly capabilities. Some days you catch 90% of your fish on the surface and other days with this pattern you catch a large portion under the surface. I'm going to be using two different threads here. I've got a uni 6 art thread. This is a very round thread. Um, it's going to be what I lash the tinsel down with, which is going to be the underbody of this fly. Okay, we are going to start our thread on the hook. And this 6 aught thread, I'm going to cord this 6 aught thread up substantially. I'm going to give it a good clockwise spin and get that corded up just like a rope. You may be able to see it there. It's spun right up and kinked up really well. I'm going to do big open spiral wraps up and down the hook shank so that the next material has something to bite into. Really wide open spiral wraps coming up. And that's going to, it's really going to create like a, almost like sandpaper or something. It's quite, quite abrasive there. That's going to allow us to tie in our mylar tinsel and have it not slip around too much. This is size large mylar tinsel, silver on one side, gold on the other. I'm going to tie this in with the silver side facing up. And that will allow the gold side to show when we wrap it on, which is what we want. Take a half hitch there, and we're going to use the rotary function of our vise. Going to wrap pretty much touching turns going back, and then I'm going to overlap it slightly coming back forward. And that's going to guarantee pretty much 100% coverage. I'm going to wrap slightly down into the bend right there. I like it. I like this shiny tag just down to start around the bend. Okay, wrap forward with good tension on that tinsel. Slightly overlapping turn so that we get good coverage there. We get back up here. I'm going to get our thread back a little. Pull that good and tight. We're going to capture that with our thread. I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to bind it down really well. Now I'm going to get rid of this thread and go to a different thread for the next step. This I'm going to do a quick whip finish of this 6 aught uni thread. And I'm going to get rid of it. For the remainder of the fly, I'm going to be using uh, Gordon Griffith's 14 aught. This is a really great, very fine thread, but very strong thread for its size. Take our 14 aught Gordon Griffiths and we're going to get it started I'm behind the eye of the hook there. Trim off our tag. The underbody to this fly is going to be a yellow material. It's going to show through the wood duck feather wings. For that yellow material, I'm going to grab a couple of feathers off of this dyed yellow, I think it's a hen saddle. I'm going to take these two feathers, I'm going to put them cup side facing each other, and I'm going to line them up, and I'm going to hold them in position. I want the back edge of this underwing to go slightly past the bend of the hook. So pretty much right pretty much right there. I'm going to stroke these back so I can see my point where I want to trim. I'm going to trim those right off. Now I'm going to stroke back four or five of those barbules on each side and I'm going to trim 
Let's trim those off reasonably close to the stem so that I've got a nice tie-in point. Take those feathers, get them in position, and keep them directly on top of the hook and directly in the middle. They're not going to want to stay there, but that's what I'm going to insist on. There we go. That's pretty good right there. Yeah, there's the underwing of this fly. Now for the actual wing, which goes in next, we are going to grab a couple of matching, close to matching, wood duck feathers. Let's see. Yeah, that one will work fine. Let's find a match to this. We can make those work. All right. So we're going to hold one up for a template. We want the edge, we want the back edge of this wing to go slightly past the yellow underbody. So right about there. I'm going to separate here where I want cut this. Uh, that will do it right there. So I've got my wing feather. I'm going to take this wing feather and I'm going to lay the other one over the top of this. Get them lined up and then I'm going to peel back the barbules on this other feather to match the one that I just did. And there it is right there. So now we know we've got two matching feathers. We're going to reach in with the tip of our scissors and get rid of that. Beautiful. And I'm saving the beautiful little scraps there for nymph tails. There's, well, there's a half dozen nice nymph tails right in there. Wood duck feather makes beautiful nymph tails. Okay, now to get these two pieces prepared to tie in, I'm going to take scissors and I'm going to just give it a little bit of a... Both stems are right on top of each other there, so I can cut them both at once. I'm going to take the scissors and tr give a little trim of the last four or five barbules there and get rid of them. And that's going to expose a nice little... It's going to expose a nice little tie-in point. Tie the one on my side in first. Now you don't want this laying flat. You want it angled, angled up slightly, just like that underwing. You want it so the bottom edge of this feather is pretty much parallel with the shank of the hook. You won't get it quite to parallel, but almost. You're going to line that up right there is where you want it. You're going to make a couple of loose wraps and have a look to make sure it's right where you want it. That looks really good to me. So now I'm going to firmly press that stem right against the side of the hook and finish off with some nice good tight wraps to get that right where I want it. Beautiful. Now we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to put that, that looks just about right, right there. Hold that good and firm. A couple of light wraps and then let's Stand back and have a look. Let's see, it's going to come up just a fraction. There we go. Now, now press down good and firm on both of those wings. And we're going to securely tie in both of those wings. Beautiful. Now we're going to put in our eye material next. For eye material, I use the ends of these barred wood duck feathers. I believe the original pattern called for jungle cock, but that material is wildly expensive and I don't use it to tie flies with. If I use those to tie flies, I wouldn't want to fish the flies. So I am going to use this substitute, and I think it's a fine substitute. Piece of that. I'm going to tent it over, slightly fold it over, and I'm going to make sure that right where I want. All right, it's going to go there. So now I know where to trim it. I'm going to come and trim it to length. That'll just prevent me from having to trim it after I get it on there. And you want this to lay perfectly flat up against the shank of the hook and parallel with it. You don't want to allow your thread torque to start wrapping that around the side. Look, have a look. That looks good. So now I'm going to grab a matching 
size piece for the other side. That looks good. I've got it there. I'm just going to tent it over to kind of double up the thickness so that it's a little more durable, a little more noticeable. And I'm going to tie that in on my side and I want it to match pretty much the first side. That looks good right there. A couple of loose wraps. Make sure I've got it right where I want it. So I want it up a tad higher. Move it a tad higher. Now I'm going to put some torque on it to make sure it can't go anywhere. All the while holding it really firm in my left hand here so that it can't start to wrap clockwise with the thread torque. Okay, there we have that. Now the next thing I do here is I come in with a little head cement. I want to shape the back of this fly and make it a touch more durable. And I'm going to do that with this head cement. This is Sally Hansen's Harder's Nails inexpensive and very good head cement to use. I'm going to take a little bit of it, wipe it on that side, a little bit of it, wipe it on that side, and I'm going to put a little bit on my fingertips. And now I'm going to come in here before it has a chance to set up, stroke it along the side, and I'm going to grab the back edge of these and kind of pinch them down just a bit. There we go. That's pretty good. Now we're going to tie in our hackle. For hackle, we are going to use a one brown hackle and one grizzly hackle. I'm going to prepare these hackle pieces for tying in. Now this hackle measures on my hackle gauge right at a 10. This is exactly what I want for this pattern. So to prepare this hackle I'm going to reach up in with the tip of my scissors and take a little trim off one side and a little trim off the other side. There's the grizzly. Here's the brown. I'm going to do the same procedure to the brown. I'm going to sneak in there with my scissors and take four or five barbules off one side and four or five off the other. That'll give me a nice little tie-in anchor. So I'm going to tie the brown in first, though it doesn't matter which one you tie in first. All you have to remember is the last one you tie in is the one that you wrap first. And I'm tying this in so the shiny side is facing me and up and the flat concave side is facing down and away from me. I'm going to do the exact same with the grizzly. There's the flat side, there's the shiny side. So this is the top of the feather facing me. Same as the other one. A couple of light wraps. I know that's right in position. Now I'm going to torque down on this pretty good. Nice firm wraps. So now what I've got to do, I'm going to wrap these hackle forward. I really like a fully hackled um, Hornberg. I don't want something that's just lightly hackled with five or six wraps. I want something very dense. Um, it helps it float um, longer. With uh, You need to put less dressing on it when fishing it as a dry fly. So I'm going to come in with the thread and I'm going to try to make this as much of a cylinder as I can. Like a tube. I don't want it to be fat in the back and thin right up towards the eye like it is now because what will happen there is these um, the barbules on the hackle, when it gets to that ramp, they'll start to jut forward. That's not what I want. So I'm going to use this thread, give it a little counterclockwise spin to get it good and flat. I'm going to make a nice flat area for this hackle to wrap up on. And this is 14 out, so it's going to take me a second here. It's the one drawback to using a good small thread but the benefit exceeds the drawback because the benefit is you can make a nice head on the fly and things don't get too bulky too fast which is very easy to have happen if you were to use that 6 aught the whole way up. Okay, We're going to use, utilize a rotating feature on the vise and I'm going to put in a half hitch to save our progress. I'm actually going to do a second one also. There we go. Okay, got the bobbin and the bobbin holder. The last hackle feather we tied in was the grizzly, so that's the first one we're going to wrap. We're going to wrap it forward. You don't need a rotary vise to do this, but it does make it quite a bit easier. And we want pretty much touching wraps to make this nice and densely hackled. We're going to come in with the next that hackle, that brown one, and fill in any gaps that we have, but ideally we don't want any gaps and we want a nice 
fully hackled fly. Just the way I like my Hohenbergs and the way I tie them. And I tie a lot of them. Okay, so we're going to capture that grizzly hackle now. I'm going to hold it up. And then we're going to come around with our thread and capture that hackle stem with four or five good wraps. I'm going to come in with our scissors and we're going to use that slanted eye of this fly as the guide on where to cut. We're going to put our scissors right on top of that eye and slide them up a bit. We're going to match that contour and that's going to allow us to trim that stem very close. We're going to do one more half hitch to keep keep that thread from coming undone. Now we're going to wrap the brown forward. There we go. I filled in any gaps and really made it nice fully hackled fly. I'm going to get a thread back. I'm going to hold this up. And I'm going to capture that hackle stem. Grab a hold of the hook so I can support it, and I'm going to put good tension on this thread. Oh, I'm going to guess about 60 or 70 percent of the breaking strength of that thread I'm going to use to, to tie down. Really stress that thread for a really good solid connection. Now we're going to come in with our scissors again. We're going to trim this hackle off close, following that same slope of the eye of the hook. We are going to reach in with the tips of these scissors and trim out any wild hairs we've got. You can see one there. Get what we can like this and then we'll tease the rest of them back and force pin them back. We'll force them back. Okay, we're going to tease those back and wrap in front of anything sticking forward and it should get it to come back. There we go. Now I'm going I'm to take my half hitch tool, wrap the thread around it once. I'm going to come up here and get it over the eye of the hook. And I'm going to slide that right up on there. There. Now we'll come in with our whip finish tool. And we're going to do a couple of whip finishes to build a nice head on this fly. I'm going to start right at the end of the eye. Gradually work our way back and finish the whip finish right up on top. And I'm going to double up on the whip finish here just to make sure we've got a really solid, very durable fly. I'm going to really set that knot properly. I'm envisioning pulling on this thread at about 70% of the breaking strength to really get that whip finish knot to slide down in there and seat properly. I'm going to come in and trim anything straggling, get rid of our thread. Put a little dab of head cement on the bodkin, about a half of a drop. And then peel back whatever hackle wants to stick in the way and just coat those thread wraps nicely. And there we have it. Very nice dry fly. Actually a very nice streamer too. It's a good combo fly. That is the Hornberg, one of the best brook trout flies known to mankind. If you've ever fished the Hornberg and had luck with it, please in the comments below let me know what species you've caught with the Hornberg and what has been your biggest fish.